In this video traders, we are gonna look at the common pattern in many so-called hype stocks. How not to get caught out, how to take advantage. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, thank you for joining me. All right, so what is a hype stock? First, let's look at the common pattern, uh, not necessarily from a technical perspective, but kind of what happens under the bonnet, so to speak, with some of the things that we can look at to gauge this. So a hype stock is really something that is super, super attractive to retail investors and traders. It's all over the news, it's kind of a new thing, and it picks up momentum. Now, normally, it's either a fresh IPO or something that's got a low float or something that really creates a lot of movement for quite a, a small amount of buying. Now, it's not a big stock generally with a high market cap. I'll get to that in a moment though, because some of these can get crazy valuations. In other words, it's not like we're IPOing something like you know, Facebook or Uber, which have a lot of institutional interest. There's a lot of kind of weight behind them. There's a lot of shares transacting. These are companies, the lower tier companies, still, well, no, say profitable. We don't know whether they're profitable or not. Still good companies underlying. You know, they're good enough to at least uh, be listed on the exchange. So there, there's been something, right? Of course, now uh, lots of companies on the exchange aren't actually profitable. But hey, that's by the by. The point is, you know, these companies aren't the biggest companies, but they're kind of second tier companies, I call them. And they're normally in something that's quite hyped up. So one of the couple of recent ones would be Beyond Meat, which is like the uh, the fake meat kind of thing, uh, which is supposedly a trend that's that's happening quite a lot at the moment. Then before that, we had uh, Tilray, which was in the cannabis sector. And there's been things before that that have been related to uh, Ebola. I think it was Lake Lakeland, slightly different setup. But you get these you know, almost regularly, guys, regular occurrence of this kind of thing. And the idea is that they are pumped up by a lot of retail buyers, a lot of people, and it's really exaggerating people's emotions. Let's have a look at what's happened. So you basically get lots of hype in it, lots of mentions on social media. Beyond Meat, great example. Um, this kind of, uh, th this product is so hyped up. Loads of people hate the idea of it. Loads of people love the idea of it. Uh, you've got this dichotomy, but the point is it's in the media, it's in the press, and people have been buying the stock. And the stock being perhaps less liquid or a bit of a low float, not that much available, means that a smaller amount of buyers, you get a much greater move up. So what happens is get lots of attention, lots on social media, and the stock price spikes. Now this then creates people saying it's overvalued because ultimately, guys, a lot of things, they, these bring attention because a lot of people say it's overvalued. You know, Till Road was overvalued when it's this, Beyond Meat it's overvalued when it's this. Now, listen, you and I both know as traders, valuation doesn't really come into it. These things can go uh, to the stratosphere, which we've seen many times before, before they may well come crashing down. So uh, they get stock price spikes really because there's a lot of demand for it and you get big gaps higher. You know, big gaps higher, like bang, bang, real big gaps. It kind of rolls, gets a bit of a crescendo going on the chart, so it starts to roll, then it'll start gapping up big. That then attracts short sellers. Of course, they're getting their faces ripped clean off, and that's adding to the pressure. The options, if it's optionable, the, the premium is skyrocketing, the cost to borrow skyrockets for short, but people are constantly too early on these shorts. You know, they're shorting on the front end of the move, and they're getting hammered because it's spiked spiking up, they're having to cover, then it kind of drifts down, then it spikes up into the close, you get all these spikes up, and then you actually get gaps lower as well, where you get this massive short covering, then a gap lower, everyone then jumps on it, and it's a pure emotional roller coaster for people involved in it. Okay, so they're always, always too early, guys. Everyone, if you see on social media, look on stock tweets or whatever, uh, forums, uh, YouTube, anything where people are sharing information about all this stuff, they're always too early with this short selling. Um, and you can almost, and you can't guarantee anything, but you can, you can bet good that short sellers will start selling and they'll be active about it and they'll be loud about it way before the turn. And you see this all the time, guys. They start selling it into this, you know, it spikes up and it's way too high. You know, I'm shorting here and it's not even getting, I haven't even started to get going yet. They might get a couple of days of it and then bang, it's up and gap, bang, it's gapping. So that's something to be mindful of. You know, at least avoid, if you're gonna be shorting this thing, at least avoid here. Not only is it super expensive to do it, but it's super dangerous. If you're gonna get involved in it, you're better just, you know, look, buying the momentum, but being careful as well because of these gaps down. But anyway. We'll get into trading ideas in a moment. As so they get hurt too early, it pulls back big percentage. So you often get this kind of thing, right? 
and it comes back off the high in a big way, that sucks in a lot of short sellers as well, thinking, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. But don't forget, there's a lot of people who have been watching this who are long only traders, who have got massive FOMO. Ah, oh, they're watching it every day, it's going up. And then they see it coming down, they're like, all oh, right, I'm gonna go back in. So it's often you get this second leg up. You get a dry fire, ridiculous spike to some crazy valuation that you know is unsustainable because the valuation is extreme. Maybe they're not even making much money or they're making very little money. They haven't got the traction that deserves that valuation. And then you get this pullback and everyone thinks it's like, that's the end. And then it normally just does one more and flushes everybody out, get all the FOMO guys in, all the short sellers we're hitting here, spitting out here, and then, things start to get interesting because it still has attention in the media because people are still talking about it because it's moving massively. So a lot of FOMO crowd in, a lot of retail investors in, a lot of short sellers in. That mix and combination and the low float and the low uh, amount of liquidity available is causing these big moves still. So here it's really kind of choppy, vulnerable. You can get hurt both ways, if I'm honest. So you've got to be careful whichever you trade it. Now you get this exhaustion move up to the upside, generally kind of one day, ma massive gap day, and then, a, and then a kind of reversal often uh, signifies the high on that. And then it consolidates. So very often, this is the case guys, you've got this, this boom up, then you've got this fine spike, then you've got this consolidation area where it just sits there. And what happens is people start to forget about it because longs have had their fun, shorts have had their fun, either they've had fun or they've had the worst time in their lives, and it just sits there. And the price starts to dampen down in volatility, volume starts to dampen down, mentions in media start to reduce, something else takes its shape. It doesn't go away completely, but you start to see it being less and less exciting. Now here, it's still overvalued because when you're extrapolating it back to the left-hand side of your chart, you know, it's still crazy kind of valuation technically. And now I'm, I'm very cautious when I say stuff like crazy valuation because there's lots of stocks out there that have seemingly high valuations and I'm definitely not a, a fundamental type of guy who's valuing stuff and saying that. But, you know, when you look at some of these stocks, they are, you know, on the really extreme side of it, not just a little bit overvalued, but really extreme. And you think, well, even if they halve, they're still quite highly valued for other similar kind of assets in the category. So, you know, you know, give me a little bit of poetic license there when I say it's overvalued. So it's still plenty of meat left on the downside. It consolidates, the cost to borrow short then starts to decline as well. The volatility declines in terms of the volatility component of the options. And then it generally will start to just revert back to the mean. It will chug lower and it will chug lower. You know, you get that sharp drop of exhaustion, you get the consolidation and the attention dies down and the stock drifts lower. And that's really, because a lot of people who have bought and have sat with it, they've taken a lot of pain. You've also got the overvaluation pressure on it. And then you've also got the fresh shorts that are coming in. So there's no real demand. Everyone whose demand was there and everyone who's got a longer term thesis is still not buying here. Okay, the short term guys who are looking for a quick run have all been in and out, they're done and dusted. They're not expecting the same kind of thing again. The guys with a longer term thesis are probably waiting for a much lower price because they're buying longer term based on valuation, generally speaking, not just on the chart pattern. So you've really got no bid there and you start to drift lower and lower and lower and lower. One tip guys to see this, and this is obviously you can see there's a lot to do with the participants and the mentions, etc. Look on Google Trends. If you go on Google Trends and type in the stock ticker code, don't type in the actual company name, like if you were doing Beyond Meat, don't type in Beyond Meat, because that's just public interested in the product. Okay, and especially if it's a consumer product, not so much with Tilray, but say Beyond Meat, it's a consumer product. So, but type in the stock ticker BYND, and you'll see massive spikes in interest. And then it's almost like the stock chart, you know, as more interest is there, you get more interest in and you get more buying. And as it starts to come down, you just see it drifting down to where it was almost before it spiked. It's kind of this level. And you know, that, hey, there's not that much interest. And this was fueled purely by, let's say purely, you know, majorly by a lot of the uh, uh, kind of buyers, a lot of the retail buyers, a lot of people with you know, your average account, investment account, buying it, hoping for a quick run, getting caught out, a lot of emotion there. So look out for that, guys. Uh, this is very common. Sometimes some slight differences, sometimes you get, don't get that second high, but the theme of lots of attention, lots of run up, uh, pain, more pain than anyone would guess for the shorts, early shorts getting hammered, uh, then it rolling back, maybe then doing another test, and then when it starts to die down, when the attention goes off it, and the cost of short goes down, it starts then to drift lower and lower. Now, who knows, later on, kind of picks up on the company dynamics chain to take over it a little bit. This has nothing to do with the company for now, this is purely to do with supply demand uh, of the stock. After that, obviously it depends on 
you know, what happens with the company. So plenty of hype stocks out there. Check them out. There's loads uh, that come around. I'm sure there'll be loads again. You'll see this pattern time and time again. Um, I think the number one thing is to be careful. I'm not definitely not shorting it on the front end because that's a recipe for disaster. You're better off waiting. In my, I mean, some guys like to try and time it on here. Fine. You know, for me, it's you're better off waiting until it's all died down. This could take months as well in getting this little kind of drift lower here. Drift, 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 drift. Like I'm, as I'm doing this video now, Beyond Meat's kind of in this section. Same with some of the other stocks as well, guys. When the hype has died down, that's the short opportunity. Again, still managing your risk, still being aware of gap risk, etc. Longs, if you're brave, some intraday opportunities there. If you're holding overnight, you've got to accept the risk that this thing could gap down. You know, news-driven play, all sorts of stuff coming out that just drives it. Uh, if you're aware of that, of course, there is some opportunity on both sides uh, to trade that. But anyway, that's the hype stock pattern. It's a broad pattern, not all like that, but generally, I've seen this time and time again. Take care, whatever you're doing, especially keeping the risk managed trading something like this. Bye-bye.